Hey, hey, it's me again. I am back again to do another vlog. And this vlog is going to be talking more about the weight loss. So I thought I'd do another vlog. And I'm just going to say this before I start my vlog because I need to get this out, right? Sometimes I may do impromptu videos like on the spur of the moment the reason being is because if it's still in my head and if i want to know what to say then it, that's how i do these impromptu videos i don't necessarily all the time have to plan out oh i've oh i've got to plan out my videos no i don't it's my channel my videos and if i want to do an impromptu video the same blob de blob de blob blah 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 then I will and this vlog will be no exception yeah so what I scratch my eyebrows I I have a nervous habit and I've said this in about three four five of my videos and if you don't like watching my videos then don't watch them if you want to see somebody that's having a nervous habit it's just because I Everybody gets butterflies or jitters before they do a video. Everybody must. There's not. I probably don't think there's like not anybody in the world that doesn't have like it doesn't get like having like get nervous when they're doing a video. Everybody must be nervous when they're doing a video, and when I have my when I get a bit nervous or anxious, I tend to scratch or flick or scratch my arm or rub my arms together it's just that's the way I am so anyway with all that out the way let's start this vlog vlog talk about the weight loss right um I went shopping today and I don't usually go shopping for clothes like I've got this this is amazing I've shown you in my other video. If you haven't already seen it, it's my Beetlejuice t-shirt. It's so comfy on. Like, don't get me wrong, I like stuff to be fitted on me, but I'm a girl that would rather be in a pair of shorts and one of these t-shirts that's quite baggy. That's me. So anyway, I go shopping today and I see I go in one of the shops and I saw this lime green t-shirt now usually if i'm a size 24 26 or 28 i would stay clear from greens i would go wouldn't go anywhere near it i'd i'd basically just go like no go away i don't want to wear your color i want to wear black and black only or black purple and blue that's the way i always have been now and again you might see a little bit of white on the top whatever but now when I went in the shop and I saw the top and I went, right, I'm getting it, I'm making a statement, I'm going to be bold, I'm going to wear this lime green top. And then next to it, there was this bright blue t a bright blue top, it was a little bit longer, so I went, right, I'm having that as well. So when I got paid for them, I was, knew what they were, knew what they were, and knew what I wanted to pay for them. Now, usually, they were... If I wasn't shopping normally and they wouldn't be in the sales, I would basically, it would basically would have been about £22 for the two items. I paid £8 for the two of them. Now you're probably going, if she's doing like a weight loss thing and she's talking about clothes the reason being is the reason why I'm talking about the clothes and like the bright colours and the I mean is because I'm starting to get comfortable in my skin and I want to wear all these different bright colours because when I was a size 28 I just wanted to wear black clothes I'm not a size 28 now I'm a size 16 so <sighs> better so you can see me in full effect so, well, I went to another shop, bought some more clothes, and so on, so on, so on. I only spent about forty pounds, but the thing is, I walked into a shop and tried on these size sixteen clothes, and just wondered where, 
with that I don't. I know I'm still a bit overweight, but well, quite a lot. Well, cause my BMI was like 60 or 70, and I was heavily overweight. My BMI now is, I think it's 32.9. So from from having a BMI of 70, I think it was 70.8. It was 70.8. My BMI now is 32.9. Um, see, I don't know where I've, I've been. Or, like, how I've done it. And, like, I feel better now in myself for going out in a shop and going, Oh, I like that. Have you got that in my size? Yeah, we got that in your size. But, like, I'm a bit weary of, like, Cause I'm used to wearing black and I know black slims you down. I actually came out of shops today with pinks, greens, orange, blues and a co and a coral like a corally orange. And I'm like like I feel good about myself for buying the clothes than I would normally. Because normally I'd just wear black but I like wearing leggings and I feel comfortable wearing leggings so so if you just see me around and she don't know she's just wearing leggings I just feel comfortable that way now we've got the clothing side sorted out because I'm currently in the size 16 and I weigh now 13 stone 4 pounds which I've now lost a total of 115 pounds in since September last year. Now that's a lot. I like it. I'm just amazed. So we've discussed the clothing side of it. Like that's the benefits that I found with it. That I could go into a sh sh like near enough any shop now and go, uh, have you got a size 16 in this? Have you got a size 16 in that? And like I feel good about myself because. I've lost all that weight. I know I'm gonna lose more, but for the time being, I've got some nice clothes. They're gonna look nice on me, and then when I do lose a bit more weight, it's gonna. I'm gonna feel comfortable having them around. For like the next two sizes down or three, and then they'll be down. <laughs> so that's like. The pro, like the good side of it, but like the bad side of it is like, I still don't get me wrong. I feel good, like that's why I've changed the whole hairstyle and my whole. I've got no, really no fat in my chin here, and I've got real. See, my arms are starting to get here, just. <laughs> pinch an inch basically I like pinch a lot of an inch down here but the thing is I know I know now that I'm going to have a lot of excess fat around my waist and this and even when I used to do my videos you would only used to see me like to here or to here I never used to show here originally in my videos because this was the bit that I was a bit Horrible about it. Didn't like it. But didn't, I just hated it. Yeah, I am still a bit. I am still fat, but I'm losing the weight. I've lo like I've lost 115 pounds in. It's not even four months, and I feel. I feel really proud. To have done that. Because if I wouldn't have lost that £115 in that short amount of time, I'd be dead. And that is just blatant telling you the truth. I wouldn't be here. And now I, I feel happy in that and stuff like that. So, we've talked about that. For, I've said that for the other two time anyway. So, we're on, on the food side. As you've heard in the last update, I was meant to eat certain stuff. But like, 
I can eat certain stuff but the problem is is these past few days past four days not yesterday from Friday to Monday I had was having lamb and chicken and the thing was it wasn't it was too thick for me and I couldn't I couldn't digest it properly and I was I was Ill, Ill in bed and I contacted the doctor and said I've got a um, bit of lamb and chicken lodged, lodged in me and I'm struggling to breathe and stuff like that and he said get out I went what do you mean he said he said vomit it out that's what he said to me vomit it out so I did it and I feel better and he said to me he said I don't really want you eating meat and I went I can't live without meat I like my meat he said well if you can't if you can't live without your meat he said it's got to be thin like kutam like you put on a sandwich and I went is that what I'm going to be eating for the rest of my life and he said well it looks like that, like that way and I went well what about mints he went yeah you can have mint but that's about it I said well what about gammon if it's thinly sliced uh, you might you might not just you need to see how you feel I went okay so I've took his advice on board and I basically now I've bought mints and have to do have to think of foods to do with mints and can do like a couple of potatoes with the cold meats and stuff like that but I was just I couldn't believe that because lamb is like my favorite meat and I can't even freaking digest it properly <sighs> like with chips and this whole allergy to vinegar it's crazy. I never expected in my life ever to be allergic to vinegar. Never ever. But I tell you, the thing is, before I had this surgery, I wasn't really too fussy on cheese. And now I love cheese. For some strange reason, I just want cheese and cheese. Well, I have um, the cold water biscuits like crackers, they're like very thin crackers so I have cheese with them on its own with thin slight thin like thin layer of layer pack butter because that's the only butter I can have I can't have flour, I can't have Vitalite, I can't have I can't believe it's not butter, I can't have Kerry butter uh, stock, not like that layer pack so all I can have is layer pack and I feel better. Well, starting to feel better for it. And it's just crazy that I would have thought after four months after having gastric bypass surgery. Sorry, that's my phone beeping. It. I have emails galore. So. So the thing is, with um, this gastric bypass surgery, I thought, oh, I'll only, I know I'll only be able to eat small portions and I'll do this and I'll do that. But I never thought that it was going to be this bloody well difficult. Like, it's hard for me to eat fucking yellow fish, excuse my language. It's hard for me to eat yellow fish of all things. I have a couple of bites of that and I'm sick. But the thing is, I like crab sticks. I've always liked crab sticks. But I don't like mushrooms. I used to love mushrooms. But I hate them. But I like onions and I like peppers. So. Something wrong. <laughs> I keep on saying to myself, oh, there's something wrong with me. But it's not. It's just. This is like a new learning curve for me. And I wish people would understand that. Yeah, I do get nervous when, when doing videos and I'm talking about something personal and I'm like this and I'm talking about me foods. Like, food used to be a big object for me. It was absolutely crazy. 
I couldn't, wouldn't be able to stop eating. And now I know when I need to stop eating. And it, it's mad because like I can't even eat much. So I'll tell you something else. When also when we were out today, I treated my daughter and my partner to a friend here in Benny's, which is a restaurant here in the UK. And the only thing that I could eat was soup. Now, I said to him, look, I only want a little bit of soup. I said, because I'll probably want some ice cream. And the girl went, yeah, 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 fine, whatever. And she went, well, do you want to know what soup we got? And I went, yeah, I do actually, because I can only have certain types of soup. So she went, when she come back, she said to me, oh, it's minestrone, do you like minestrone? I went, yeah, I'll have minestrone, I'll try it, do you know what I mean? I said, just do me a little bit, don't not loads. And she went, why I went, to, I've had gastric bypass surgery. Like, almost four months ago. And she went, oh, 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 okay. And my partner, he got a um, fish dinner. And Tori, she got, she got ribs, ribs, salad and chips. And they got a drink because with the gastric bypass you can't eat and drink at the same time it's got to be if you have something to eat you've got to wait an hour before you have a drink and at first i couldn't wrap my mind around having a drink separate from my meal it was crazy but it's worked it's i'm i'm getting used to the whole hour difference it's crazy but i'm getting used to it and so we're having our dinner and all of a sudden Peter's stomach was a, was a bit funny and then I kept on going to the toilet about three four times and I was sick I was I was vomiting so something in that soup that I had didn't agree with me and Tori had pains in her stomach and so did my Peter and then what we came to find out is both Tori and Peter had this glass of tango orange between the two of them. And I was like, oh no, my baby's sick and my partner's not well. And I've been sick all over the place. And I was. I had to stop at the traffic lights. Well, my partner drives, obviously. We stopped at the traffic light and I pulled the thing out and I was sick everywhere. So like... I know now, you know, like, I'm trying to get used to eating back in a public place, but it's, it's hard, but I'll get there eventually in the end. So, it, it's, it, this has been like a massive roller coaster for me and I just want to be able to go, right, I can handle it all. Because I'm handling it. It's just a, it's just hard because I want to eat some of my favourite foods. Like steak, no dough. And someone said to me, oh my, my son had, um, it was my godmother's son. This was ages ago. She said to me, well uh, my son had um, steak um, two, two to three months after he had his surgery. And I was like, oh right, so you can eat steak after the surgery. She went, well he did, he had steak and chips still. Steak, chips and a little bit of veg. I went, oh right. So, but I've always wanted the surgery anyway, so. But like, as I'm saying, after my surgery, I'm eating different things. So the thing, thing I'm explaining to myself is, don't if this is like a sort it's not an advice but this is what I, I would say don't expect if you are having gastric bypass surgery to go oh well if he's if he's having steak two to three months after his surgery and yet you you are only allowed having mint and a little bit of gammon then what's wrong do you know what I mean? So it's it. What I'm trying to say is, 
when you do have the gastric bypass you don't expect it you gotta eat steak within a couple of months because it doesn't happen like that it starts a little bit and a little bit and a little bit i'm getting there maybe maybe it might take 12 months and then i'll be able to eat some meat but so far i'm doing well for myself i am eat well i've lost a total of eight stone uh, eight stone 11 pounds which equivalents to i'm gone so two stones 28 pounds and six stones 56 pounds and Yeah, I've lost I've lost well I hang on. Yeah, I've lost hundred and fifteen pounds. So it's like it weighs about nine stone. What? It's crazy. So also just wanna like say if you if any of you guys do wanna have surgery just be careful because don't rush into the foods because you've got to realize is that once you have the surgery your stomach is like hang on your stomach's like that so imagine trying to put a piece of big piece of meat through that it's going to be impossible to digest and make sure you chew your foods normally and every minute they always say a minute a mouthful so that's good. Um, so I'm just thinking what else to talk about food wise. Yeah, um, it's like a lot of foods also that I haven't eaten. Like, the only like I used to like skips and watts and stuff like that, you know, just to say about like three, four weeks after my surgery. But now that makes me feel a bit sickly. So I tend to have a... I know this sounds really cliche. I know that's what I'm saying. Like it's different people's different ways. But the only crisp I can eat now is ready salted hula hoops. And I have like one to two packets a day. But it's like it like could be like I'll have a packet of hula hoops at about three o'clock in the afternoon or two o'clock in the afternoon and may have another pack about eight o'clock at night that's it but stuff like that like chocolate i hardly eat chocolate i used to love the stuff and now i just don't i may have like a couple of pieces now and again but you have to realize that that chocolate can seep through your small stomach and into your old intestines and and that so that can be a little bit crazy and like ice creams and that's another thing ice cream can do the same thing just seep out and go into your old intestines but other than that i'm doing great um i do it's like i talked about this in the last one I do watch what foods I eat. I do go to the shops and I do look at, I actually look at the labels and go, well, I can't have that. Oh, but I can have that. But like, like I don't want to have any cakes. No go cakes. I might have, I had like a couple of bites out of this eating mess dessert at Christmas, but that was it. I'm not. I don't really like cakes and I'm more I like crisps so it's more savoury food that I'm eating now and I wasn't eating a lot it was more sweet now I'm and now I like my savoury foods a lot more and just I'm just be careful in what I'm doing and it's because it's like to be honest I'll be honest with you I don't I don't miss being that girl that was twenty that was twenty five stone in a size twenty eight to thirty. I do not miss that. 
that girl one bit. I don't miss her. I know you're probably going, why are you being horrible saying that? But to be honest, I don't miss her. I don't miss that 25 stone girl. Because that 25 stone girl was the girl that was getting picked on, bullied, left, right and centre. Uh, and in a way she was being fake. Whereas now I've lost that much weight. I'm I'm just shocked because the person that you see now in front of the camera, well on the camera, is somebody I've always wanted to be, somebody that I've probably wanted to look up to. Like I know I'm not gonna get there just yet, it might be like a year, it might be two years before I get to my ideal weight. But I'm almost six months and I'm halfway. I'm halfway. So maybe in like 12 to 18 months, I'll probably be a lot different. The fat might be taken from your stomach, you don't know. But time will tell. And so far, I'm doing what's right by me, by my health, by taking my vitamins every day because. That's one other thing that you have to realise when you've had uh, gastric bypass surgery. For the rest of your life you're going to be on vitamins and minerals and all sorts of like different vitamin tablets and stuff like that and reflux tablets that's to help you swallow the food down properly and Just what I would say is like I planned I planned all this. I waited five and a half years to have this done. So I done my research, I done everything. Yeah, you do make mistakes, you do trip over little things now and again, but you learn to work you learn to work it through and then you decide, well, at the end of the day is this for me and I've, I've actually realized yeah this is for me I made the right decision because I've dropped six dress sizes in less than four months and I've still got another maybe four or five dress sizes to go and I to be honest I feel Good. Sorry, it's beeping. That's the my phone. Like I feel a lot of health benefits, but there's sometimes now and again where I still get do get the odd back pain. I still get. I, it's this knee. I've had a problem with this knee since I was nine years of age. I. It's a long story, but. I've had problems with this knee and I'm hoping to get an operation next year with this knee calf. Um, I've had so many breaks on it. Uh, it's always in pain. It's always, always, I've always had trapped nerves in it and stuff like that. Because people go, oh, you can't get a trapped nerve in your knee. And I go, well, I have many times cramps. My knee, my kneecap's actually locked on me, and I could, I haven't moved my leg for about two, three days, because I tried every way to unlock it, and then I had to get put and taken to hospital, and then they tried to fix it. But like, with this, you do see the health benefits, but you won't. Some people may not see it straight away. I have, like, the thing is, I'm, I have chronic asthma as well. And I was on three, four inhalers, and I was taking them three, four, five times a day, maybe more, sometimes six. And now I just take my, I don't take my Ventolin, my Ventolin is there for an emergency, it's a beautiful one. But my Foster, which is the strongest inhaler you can have, I have that 
you, you say two puffs twice a day. I have, I have two puffs once a day. It's not to like mess things up. It's just that because with what happened and that, and I'm not as breathless as much. My as my asthma would probably clear, which be good. And I still like you're not gonna like notice it all straight away, but sometimes you may do. But all I'm saying is keep at it. Wait a couple of wait if you're not having the surgery. Wait at least six to eight weeks before you go to the gym. Until you're fully healed and your stomach of all your where your incisions are, make sure you're fully in healed before you go to the gym. But if you can't, if you can't afford the gym, the best thing to do is like, even if you've got a dog, or even if you haven't got a dog, make sure you don't have anything to eat beforehand. And make sure you always take, if you're an asthmatic, take an inhaler. Make sure you take a li at least a little small bottle of water with you. And just start walking. I do. Walk around the block. Walk up and down the street. Twice, three times. Or do like, the way my street is, right? You've got like a straight street and then you've got one, two, three, four. What you could do is you could go, come out where you live. Up one street, down the other, up another, down another, and then back across again. Then that could take like five, ten minutes. Then if you're, yeah, because they say at least do ten minutes of exercise a day, ten to fifteen minutes. If you like, you want to just start out exercising and then wake up. And that that's what I do once a day, maybe twice a day. Just do that little walk because that's how my street works. Or you could just go like round in a block, or like if your your houses are in like a horseshoe shape. This is like it's like where I used to live. You could put, you could start from the end of the the other street, the the other street, walk along, then turn into the street where you live, then go up and down one part of the street then walk along up another part walk right the way round into the next close well the, it was close then come back on the next street then no hang on then go back go into the, the next road turn back around then cross over then go the opposite way into the horseshoe bend. Walk around and then walk back along again. And then that'll take you 15 minutes to do. But I'm just giving you some suggestions if you want to like do some exercises. I know some people can't. That's understandable. But that's what I would do to start off and then progress to swimming swimming first and then go to the gym then do more then do a lot of arm work then go on the tread do treadmill and weight and then do like the bike and stuff or even better still get yourself a bike and ride and then you'll get might get some weight off you that's if you need to go on a diet or stuff like that <sighs> I've gone on for miles, so I've talked about different aspects of weight loss and how you can achieve weight loss if you're going down the surgical route and what you can do after. That's that's like my little bit of advice in a, a vlog, which this has took almost 35 minutes long to do, but I'm glad I've done it and I'm glad I've shown you my waist and how I really look because I don't really like showing people my waist much so I hope you like my little vlog please stay gory and have unpleasant dreams ta ta for now